All right, so the purpose of this video is to convey some of the abnormal things that we're seeing within this strength test um, that um, we're yet able to explain. Um, but it's unique of what we're seeing, not only as the individual performs the test, but also in his strength curves. So here's an example. Uh, notice that the end ranges of motion, how you get this uh, shakiness of the quadriceps as if he's having difficulty recruiting a sequential means of motor units. And when we actually look at the, uh, the strength curves, there's also this abnormality. So if, so presenting subject one, this is a normal strength curve where you have uh, an immediate acceleration, uh, sustainable force, maybe some fluctuation over the five seconds of an isometric contraction. Subject two, very similar. You can see that this individual also has some fluctuations and has some fatigue at the end. Um, however, uh, they look relatively similar. So this is an example of our patient today who it was un had that shakiness um, as he exerted himself. This one is specifically at an isometric of 60 degrees um, a knee flexion, it's isometric, uh, and this abnormal recruitment. So here would be normal curves, and then if we were to zoom in on uh, one of the one of the abnormal curves in subject number three, it would look like this, which we've seen this um, in arthrogenic muscle inhibition following uh, uh, ACL and other knee-related injuries. Uh, oftentimes, this is shown that there's alteration within the spinal cerebral uh, yeah, the spinal cerebral tract um, and with the uh, neurological discharge and the means of having a sequential uh, motor unit recruitment and the sustainability of that force. Um, I, I can't necessarily explain it in this patient given the fact that he's non post-operative though he does have knee pain uh, intermittently. Uh, it, he doesn't have any knee pain at uh, during the time of the test, and he was asymptomatic today. Uh, yet, it's uh, something of note and something uh, that we're going to uh, attempt to address through uh, similar means of how we would address an individual postoperatively with neuromuscular electrical stimulation, uh, targeted uh, rehab with using isometrics and uh, force steadiness training, and then. Um, potentially even blood flow restriction training, which can also help uh, to influence the uh, spinal cerebral tract. All right. Some additional examples. So these, this is him at 60 degrees, but things become a little bit more profound and a little bit more interesting the closer to knee extension that he becomes, as you saw in the video, that the shaking was a little bit more pronounced. So here's at 45 degrees, he, the, the uh, vibrations continue to occur. What you also notice is that there's a, a dissipation in the ability to sustain force, suggesting of a fatigue element as well. And then finally, the most dramatic is at 30 degrees of knee flexion, where um, you get a, a spike and then a precipitous dis decline, uh, which again, it, it could be uh, secondarily due to deconditioning, uh, but it's definitely more dramatic on the right side than on the left even though the left does demonstrate similar uh, strength curves and abnormalities. If you were to zoom in on one of these it, uh, curves, it would look like this. Uh, again, dramatically different from the examples given above. So this is uh, subject number one uh, as a reference. It's just a copy and paste from above. Uh, and so, again, the explanation here, um, it's more of an observation. I know that we can potentially treat this with similar means. Um, if the etiology of the abnormality that we're seeing within his neuromuscular recruitment um, is uh, peripheral rather than central, um, being it uh, higher up in the nervous system. And then uh, just for further uh, delineation and comparison to what we would expect with such a test. So here's subject two from above, and you can see the right and the left leg um, respectively, um, where uh, you get kind of, again, more of a box uh, and a steadiness of force. And then 
you can see that the, the deficit from side to side is uh, within 6.8%, which would be a normal asymmetry from left to right. Uh, for our individuals, specifically when we look at him at 30 degrees, where it's, uh, so this is at 60 degrees, you can see, again, the abnormality in the curvature uh, of the strength curve and the inability to sustain a steady force output. Uh, and then uh, when we look at 30 degrees, it's, it's even more dramatic. Uh, where you get the inability to sustain force, the inability to recruit motor units on a sequential basis. And then we also have a substantial asymmetry from side to side with 35%. Um, so it just really more poses questions um, and it's at the request of the patient to uh, convey uh, the asymmetries and the some of these abnormalities that we're seeing within physical therapy in order to accurately convey it to his uh, care team. Uh, again, we our plan within from a exercise and rehabilitation standpoint is to uh, utilize similar modalities that have been shown to be uh, effective for arthrogenic muscle inhibition uh, around the knee specifically, where we uh, see uh, that it can have benefits not only on the periphery of the muscle and the innervation of the uh, neuromuscular junction, but also higher up uh, within the uh, spinal cord and at the cortical levels. Um, we have yet to see similar um, shakiness within this patient at, with different muscle groups. Uh, this being said, he does demonstrate some abnormalities with the ability to recruit uh, uh, glute medius. Uh, when we've looked at this under uh, surface EMG, uh, and the difficulties to, to sustain that contraction. And then the 35% that we see here is comparable to the deficit that we took today also with this handheld dynamometry for a hip flexion. So having him seated on the uh, edge of the table, uh, proximally stabilized with arms and op opposing limb, uh, that is foot on the ground, and then lifting up forcefully uh, to a max peak contraction. So we're looking at a predicted, based off his body weight and size, 47 pounds of force. On the right, he's at 36, um, whereas the left, he's pretty close to that normative range. Uh, and then once again, we're seeing about a 23% a uh, asymmetry from side to side, or, or, or off of the predicted, and about 21%. Mm, uh, decrement. So same nerve innervation um, of noteworthy with the hip at the max hip flexion uh, with the femoral nerve as what we're seeing above with the quadriceps. We don't really see the, uh, the kind of the dramatic uh, change in the strength curves with his hamstrings, uh, uh, which is of note. Um, the other only other speculation that I, I could consider here is that the individual is quite stiff in his posterior chain thus getting to uh, terminal end range. Uh, he actually needed some manual assist to be able to set the range of motion to get the uh, dynamometer to be at near knee, full knee extension. And this poses the question of potential reciprocal inhibition of the tension on the posterior chain and potentially it's uh, within the um, uh, within the muscle spindles of the uh, hamstrings that are causing a reflexive loop and inhibiting the quadricep force production um, at this term, the, the closer the individual gets the terminal uh, knee extension. Uh, so these are the uh, speculations and the observations, uh, more to become uh, when we actually get into intervention and how fruitful that will uh, be.